Okay, welcome back. Today we are going over some exercises about instantaneous velocity. If you haven't done the exercises yet, uh, please go try them out first. You can find a link to them in the description below. And uh, once you're done, come back here and continue watching. Okay, so let's go over them now. Question one says that you are riding an ostrich and race down a straight line. Your equation of motion is x equals 0.9 meters per second squared t squared minus 0.02 meters per second cubed t cubed. Okay, so what is your average velocity between t equals 0 and t equals 10.0 seconds? So let's remember our equation for the average velocity is going to be the displacement over the time interval. Okay, so we can see the time interval is 10 seconds, right? But the displacement is what we have to figure out. So we know we start at uh, zero meters because if you plug in t equals zero here, you will get zero meters for zero seconds. But we don't know what your position is at t equals 10 seconds. So that's what we need to figure out. We need to find out what is your x position at 10 seconds. Okay, so let's plug that in. 0 0.900 meters per second squared times 10.0 seconds squared minus 0 0.0200 meters per second cubed times 10.0 seconds cubed. Okay, so let's figure this out. This will be uh, 0 0.900 times a 100 seconds squared. And you see the seconds squared will cancel here, so we'll have an answer in meters. And then this will be 0 0.0200 meters per second cubed times a 1,000 seconds cubed. And again, the second cubed will cancel out here, and so we'll have an answer in meters. And so we can see what this is gonna be. So the first one, first term here is going to be uh, 100 times 0.9, which should be 90. Okay, so we've got 90 meters minus uh, 0 0.02 times 1,000 is going to be 20. Okay, minus 20 meters equals 70 meters. Okay, great. So that is our position at 10 seconds. We've ridden the ostrich for a total of 70 meters. And now we can get our average velocity between t equals zero and t equals 10. So this is gonna be delta x over delta t, which is going to be delta x is gonna be 70 meters and delta t will be 10 seconds. And so this becomes seven meters per second. So there we go, seven meters per second. Although to be fair, we should be using significant figures. So let me, let me do that correctly. Okay, we've got three sig figs on all of these. So it's going to be uh, 90.0 meters minus 20.0 meters, which is going to equal 70.0 meters. And now delta x over delta t will be 70.0 meters over 10.0 seconds and so our answer will be 7.00 meters per second squared and now we have the correct number of significant figures okay let's look at point b here uh, what is the equation for your velocity as a function of time so remember the velocity is going to be equal to the derivative of the x position with respect to time so that's what we have to do. We have to take the derivative of this equation, all right? The derivative of that. So let me just copy that down for us. We need the derivative of this equation right here. Okay, so what is the derivative of this going to be? Well, we're going to use the power rule for each term here, okay? So this two is going to multiply by the constant in front so this is going to be equal to two times 0 0.900 meters per second squared and then it's going to be t to the power of two minus one right so we reduce the exponent by one 
and this is going to be for the second term now minus we do the same thing the three comes in front multiplies by that constant so it's going to be minus three times 0 0.0200 meters per second cubed t to the power of three minus one okay so now we can simplify this and this is going to become 1.80 uh, meters per second squared t minus 0 0.0600 meters per second cubed t squared. And this is the derivative of the x position equation here. So this is our now, now our velocity equation. Okay, now we're going to be able to use this velocity equation to answer part c. What is your instantaneous velocity at time equals zero seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds? Okay, so the first one should be pretty easy. We see at zero seconds, if we plug in zero here and here, we get zero. Okay, so what does that mean? Our velocity is going to be equal to zero meters per second at t equals zero seconds. What about when t equals five seconds? Well, now it's not so clear, okay? So let's plug in what this is going to be. So we'll get 1.80 meters per second squared times five seconds minus 0 0.0600 meters per second cubed times 5.00 seconds squared. Okay, so let's see what this is. We're going to get here uh, 1.8 times 5. So this is going to be 9. Okay, so this is going to be 9.00. And you can see this seconds cancels here. So we're getting meters per second for our units. Minus, what's this? So 5 seconds is going to be squared is 25 times 0 0.06 and that's 1.5 okay so 1.5 and we see again the second squared is going to cancel with two of these so we'll have units of meters per second and this should be 7.5 meters per second now when we uh combine both of these terms together and that is our instantaneous velocity at time equals five seconds okay Finally, let's do it again for t equals 10 seconds. Okay, so it's going to be 1.80 meters per second squared times 10.0 seconds minus 0 0.0600 meters per second cubed times 10.0 seconds squared. Okay, so we've got uh, going to be uh, 10 times 1.8, it's going to be 18.0 meters per second. You can see the second cancels one of these. Minus, uh, we have uh, 100. Okay, 100 times 0 0.06. So we're going to move the decimal point over two spots. So that's going to be 6, minus 6.00 meters per second. And so our final answer here will be 12.0. Uh, meters per second and that is our instantaneous velocity at t equals 10. And when we compare this back to our average velocity over the first 10 seconds we can see that we've already gone over the average velocity at t equals 5, right? At t equals 5 we're already at 7.5. So that indicates to me that it was definitely moving slower in the beginning and then quickly ramped up speed later on. Let's look at part, B, uh, part D here. Okay, you are racing against your friend who is riding another ostrich, of course. Uh, their equation of motion is x equals 1.5 meters per second squared t squared minus 0 0.05 meters per second cubed t cubed. What is their instantaneous velocity when you pass them? Okay, when you pass them, how fast are they going? What is their instantaneous velocity? So let's think about what's happening here. This implies that you're both starting this race at the same time and at the same position, because if we put in t equals zero here, we get x equals zero, right? So we know that at x, t equals zero, you're both at x equals zero. After that, it looks like your friend's ostrich takes off a little bit faster, but then you catch up with it. 
And at that point, at that time, when you catch up with him, how fast is he going? That's what we have to figure out. So first we have to figure out, well, what time do you catch up with him? When do you catch up with him? And we know that when you catch up with him, whatever that X value is, it's going to be the same. Okay, because you're catching up by definition, you're at the same position. Okay, so what we do is we set these two equations equal to each other to find out what time it is when they're both equal to each other. Let's do that. So I'll bring the first equation down here, and that's 0 0.900 meters per second squared t squared minus 0 0.0200 meters per second cubed t cubed and we know that when you catch up their positions will be the same so your position will be the same as your friends and we can calculate that using his equation meters per second squared t squared minus 0 0.0500 meters per second cubed t cubed okay so let's now see what time uh, we get here when we put them equal to each other Again, the trivial solution is t equals zero. So this is definitely true when t equals zero. But let's see if there's another time when you catch up with him and have the same position as him. So what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to subtract 0 0.900 meters per second squared t squared from both sides. Okay, and then I'm also going to add I'm going to add 0 0.0500 meters per second cubed t cubed to both sides. And when I do that, we can see that this term and this term will cancel, and this term and this term will cancel, and we'll be left with, uh, this looks like 0 0.0300 meters per second cubed time cubed is going to be equal to uh, looks like uh, 0 0.600 meters per second squared t squared okay so this is what we get now we can divide uh, both sides by t squared so this t squared is going to cancel two of those powers over there and now we can solve for t okay so we can see now that T must be equal to 0 0.600 meters per second squared over 0 0.0300 meters per second cubed. Okay, and now we can try and solve what this is going to be. And we can look at the units first, the meters and the meters cancel. The second squared cancel with two of these and now this is going to flip up to the top so we've got 0 0.6 over 0 0.03 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.03 there we go it's going to be 20 20.0 seconds okay so now this is the time when you catch up with him great so we're not quite done yet we need to know how fast he's moving his instantaneous velocity at that time at t equals 20. So let's look at that and let me just move this over a little bit so we can borrow some more room. Very good. Okay, let's keep going here. Well, how fast is he going to be moving? We need an equation for the instantaneous velocity here. And we know that that will be equal to the derivative of his position equation here. Okay, so let's do that. Let's see if we can uh, see this. There's gonna be two times 1.5, so that's going to be three meters per second squared, t to the power of two minus one, right? So to the power of one, so we just write that. And this is gonna be equal to minus, now we have to multiply this three in, so it's gonna be three times 0.05, so that's gonna be 0 0.150, meters per second cubed t to the power of three minus one so t squared okay so this is our instantaneous velocity equation for your friend riding his ostrich and we're going to plug in 20 seconds 20.0 seconds right here okay so what is this going to be let me zoom in a little bit 
and let's see what this is going to be here. So we've got uh, 3.00 meters per second squared times 20.0 seconds. Good. Seconds cancel here, so we're going to get meters per second. And here we have 0 0.150 meters per second cubed times 20.0 seconds squared. So let's see what this equals. Well, 3 times 20, this is going to be 60.0 meters per second. And what do we have here? We have 20 times 20 is going to be 400 times 0.15. Five. That's also 60. So this will be minus 60.0 meters per second. And we can see that this is equal to zero meters per second. So that is how fast your friend is moving when you catch up with him. He's actually stopped. He's got a velocity of zero meters per second. And that's when you catch up with him. So he must have been slow. He went out fast and then he started slowing down. And you caught up with him when he stopped at exactly t equals 20 seconds. So there you go. That's how we're going to be answering all of these questions here, um, all the parts for question one. Let's move on now to question number two. All right, question number two, we have a graph and we're going to look at this graph. We have a couple points on it, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And we need to find uh, first the average velocity between points A and E. Okay, so between points A and E, what is the average velocity going to be? Oh, uh, well, this is a trick question. Okay, it's going to be zero, zero meters per second. Why is it? Because you can see that our average velocity is equal to displacement over time and our displacement you can see is zero right you started here at zero meters and then you went up and you came back down back to zero meters and so there is zero displacement so it's going to be zero meters over well it might have taken eight seconds but that doesn't really matter okay we're still going to be having a speed uh, an average velocity of zero meters per second Okay, very good. Part B, what is the average velocity between points B and F? Okay, so between points B and F, what we could do is we could plot like a straight line over here and find the slope, um, and, or we could just compute the average velocity using the equation. Either way is going to work. So we need uh, change in position over change in time. Okay, so x2 is going to be uh, f, which is going to be negative 20, right? Remember, this is going to be x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1, okay? So x2 is negative 20 meters, and that's going to be minus uh, position at b is 20 meters, okay? Next, we have uh, time two at F is going to be 12 seconds minus at B is four seconds. OK, so what's this going to be? This is going to be negative 40 meters over. Uh, what's this? This is going to be eight seconds. OK, so if we do this, 40 divided by eight is going to be five. OK, so negative five meters per second. There you go. That's going to be your average velocity between the points B and F. Now, what is the average speed between points A and E? So, uh, yes, we found that the average velocity was zero, but now it's asking for the average speed. And speed and average speed and average velocity are going to be different. Okay, we want to remember that our average speed right? The equation is going to be distance over time. And this particle, whatever it is, definitely traveled some distance. In fact, if you look, it's, you're going to see it went from A, it went up to 60, I'm sorry, up to 50 meters, right, at point D, and then it came back down to zero at point E. So our total distance traveled was actually 100 meters, right? It went, it went in the positive x direction 50 meters and then came back 50 meters back to the position zero. So our distance is 100 meters and our time here is uh, from A to E. So that's nine minus one gonna be 
eight seconds. And so our speed, average speed is 100 divided by eight, which is gonna be 12.5 meters per second. That's our average speed. So average speed and average velocity, not the same. Okay, finally, we want to know the instant velocity at all of these points A through G. So let's start with point A here. If you recall, the instantaneous velocity is going to be equal to the slope of the graph at that point, or put another way, the slope of the tangent line to the point on the graph right there. Uh, now here we can see that the slope at point A is equal to going to be this, uh, this slope of this line right here. So what is that going to be? Well, we can see, uh, we can see here over a delta T of one second, we have a delta X of 20 meters, right? So the slope is 20 meters per one second. Okay, so we have 20 meters over one second, and that is equal to 20 meters per second. Great, okay, so that's the instantaneous velocity at point A. For point B, we can see that the slope here is zero. And so point B is going to have an instantaneous velocity of zero meters per second, because for this entire section here, it's not moving, right? The position stays the same while time moves forward, so it's not moving. Now, for point C, we're going to need to find the slope of this line. And if we look at that, we see that the slope here is going to be uh, a delta x of 20 to 50, so that's 30 meters, and one second it passes. So this is equal to 30 meters per second for point C. And now for point D, we can see just like point, D, point B, it is horizontal. And so we have a zero meter per second instantaneous velocity. Okay, let's look at point E now. So point E, we have to take the slope of this line. So delta X over delta T is going to be equal to, uh, okay, X2 minus X1. So X2 is going to be negative 20. Uh, X1, we can see here is going to be 50, and these are meters. And our delta T is going to be here, is going to be 10 seconds minus what we have here is seven seconds. So this is equal to negative 70 meters over three seconds. And so this is going to be equal to 70 over three. Uh, about 23.3, about negative 23.3 meters per second. That's our instantaneous velocity there. Let's look at point F. Point F is flat. So this is going to be, again, zero meters per second. And point G, point G here, we're going to have a delta X over delta T. Okay, so X2 is zero meters minus X1, which is negative. 20 meters and our delta t here we can see it's going to be two seconds okay An interval of two seconds so this is going to be 20 meters over two seconds which is equal to 10 meters per second okay so there we go we can now see how to look at this graph and see what the instantaneous velocity is going to be now normally if you have a graph that is uh curving right then it's not going to be exactly obvious what the tangent line is going to be. So for example, let's say we need to find the tangent uh, to, uh, to this point right here. Well, at that, with that, it's going, to be, it's going to be more difficult. You'd actually have to try and come in and maybe find an accurate, uh, an accurate graphical way of, of graphing the tangent which is not so simple, right? And then finding the slope of this tangent line. But in the case of the graph for this question, it's not curving at any point uh, where the points are. And so we know that the tangent line at A is gonna be the same slope as the line right there at A, that, we, that straight line, and we can just use that straight line directly to calculate the slope.
Okay, so I hope that this helped you out and clarified any questions you might have had with these exercises. If you still don't understand something and you still have more questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try and help you out there. If this helped you out, uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, uh, give me a sub and um, come back for our next lesson when we start talking about acceleration, which is sort of the next level past velocity. Okay, I hope to see you there. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.